In this video, I want to show you how to resolve a problem that comes from Excel automatically adjusting the minimum value on a bar, column, or line graph. So here's the situation. Let's look and, and I'll show you the problem. So uh, let's say we have uptime percentages for these five units here, A through E, and the numbers and the graph starts at zero. So we can see they're relatively close to each other, some a little lower, some a little higher. Now the problem is, is when you update the data, let's say C now instead of 82, it's 84. Whoa, what just happened? I mean, now C looks like it's what, one third of, of B and D, but th that's not real. Well, so what happened is, is Excel automatically adjusted the minimum of the value axis here. So now your, your chart is not realistically showing the comparison. Why does it do that? And, and the problem is, is that this happens automatically. We didn't change anything other than the data just by two from 82 to 84 and it automatically adjusted it. And it puzzled me for, for a long time. Why does Excel do this with some graphs and why does it not do it with other graphs? Well, recently I found what causes this problem. So Jeffrey Schaefer had tweeted about this and I saw it just recently. And what he discovered is that if the minimum value that you are graphing is greater than 83.33% of the maximum value that you are graphing, then Excel adjusts the measurement axis and does not start at zero, but starts at some other number. Now, how did he figure this out? A lot of experimentation, I think, but it's so valuable that he figured this out it doesn't change the fact that this automatically happens. I, I love his suggestion, how about we change that default to never? Well, great, I'd love to have that happen, but the reality is that's not going to happen. So how do we solve it? Because we don't want our graphs to change without us knowing it. So the solution is to have a second data series with one value that's zero. Now you might say, hey, Dave, that's a little kludgy, yeah, but we want to make sure that our chart always works the way it's supposed to. So instead of having our original chart, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the original data plus the second data series that just has one value that's zero. I'm gonna insert my regular column chart here. And now what you'll notice is it starts at zero. But the problem is, the columns, there's this second column zero beside here, so the columns aren't as wide. So here's what we have to do is we're going to set the, the overlap, the series overlap to 100%. So I'll select the columns, I'll open up my formatting task pane, and I'll set the series overlap from minus 27 to 100%. And that's okay because they overlap each other and the second set of columns is zero anyways. So it, it, it's not that anything's getting hidden. I'll set my gap width to my normal, which is 50%. Now I can go ahead and add my uh, data labels here, just so I'm, I'm having it the same as uh, I had it before. And I don't need my, my uh, grid lines here. Now, the question about the legend. So you have a couple of options on the legend here. One is if you don't need a legend at all, and in this particular chart, I don't need a legend. I can just use the title. I could just delete the legend, uncheck it here and get rid of the legend. But if you have multiple columns and you're adding this zero column, but you do need the legend, what you can do is you can select the legend and then you can select just this item in the legend and then you can delete it. I just hit the delete key there. So that's an option. I'm just gonna get rid of the legend because I don't need it here uh, at all. Now, if you want, you can uh, make that zero column invisible. You can't see it now because it's overlapped anyways and zero value, you're not seeing anything. But if you really don't want it there, what you can do is you can set its color, fill color and outline color to no color. On my chart format ribbon, I can use the drop down here to select that zero series. And then in the shape fill, I can say no fill. In the outline, I can say no outline. 
So now it's not going to be there even if, if for some reason it showed up. This uh, is something that, so for chart uh, charts that are columns or bars, you have to do the overlapping. For a line chart, it, it's not going to show up anyway, so you don't have to do the overlapping. So what I'm going to do is, let me just show you that. I'll select the data. I'll insert my regular line chart here. And you can see that now the line chart starts at zero the way it's supposed to. Because a single point line never shows up, uh, a line chart needs two points on a line to draw a line between them. You don't have to worry about getting rid of it because it's never going to be there and the overlapping isn't a concept with line charts. So all I really need to do here with this line chart, I'll move it down, is to uh, get rid of the legend so that we don't see that. And this is a way that we can change our data. So if it's 82, as it was before, you'll see the original and then I'll put the column beside it. The, the original changed, the, the new one didn't, that has the zero. If I change this now to 84, the original again resets to a different value axis, doesn't start at zero, but our new one that has that zero data series is always going to be accurate. So use that tip of adding a second data series just has one zero value to make sure that all of your column, bar, and line charts in Excel always have their measurement axis starting at zero. If you found this video helpful, there are three things you can do to help me out. First, click the like button below the video on YouTube. Second, leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And third, subscribe to my channel. Check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice. Thanks again for watching.